Okay, fellas, this is our Delta V system. If you have a look at it, you'll see there's lots of wires and cables coming in. All of our I.O. is marshaled down here, and then from the marshaling panel, it goes up and it ties into all of our I.O. modules. If you have a look at those, can you determine which modules are used for field bus? I think you can see that, that module 17, 18, 19, and 20, that's our H1 module. So our H1 module, H1 technology, that's where we have our linked active scheduler. That's where the traffic cop is, and that's where uh, we're going to control all the communications on the network or on the bus, on the, on the field bus network. So out of our, out of our, uh, uh, our H1 modules, they're tied in on a back plane. If you come over here, you can see there's a, a comm cable here. And that's actually run up to the top back plane over here. And that ties into the communications for our, our PK300 Delta V controllers. These are two new controllers that were installed last year. Um, uh, so we've, we're upgrading the system all the time. If you have a look here, you can see that we have two sets of wires coming out of our H1 uh, modules. And these are actually ports. So there's two ports that we have coming out of here, two ports out of this one, this one, this one, for a total of eight ports. They come down and they go into our Railcom modules. These are our power conditioners. So the wires come in here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight ports total. From there, out of the power conditioners, our signals then drop down into our marshalling panel. And you can tell which ones are the field bus wires right away by the orange and blue wires. We've talked about shielding with field bus because we can't have noise on our, on our signal wires. If you come down and have a look, you'll see that we have all our shields terminated. And then what we did was we tied them all in on one overall shield down to our isolated system ground bar down here. So that's how everything is wired into our panel. We come from our controllers through our communication module onto the back plane. These are all of our I.O. cards. You can see, for example, these are analog heart. So those would be analog signals going into those input cards. And again, we have our H1 field bus modules. Two ports we're using on each, each module. Back through our power conditioners, our rail comms. Notice that they have, that's where our terminators are. And then from there, we're wired down into our marshaling panel. And from there, our field bus wires go out to our segments out in the field in the junction boxes. Okay, so we are ready to do our static checks on our segment wiring, and uh, we need to take some readings here to ensure the integrity of our cable is what we're doing. Um, we're also making sure that we take readings and we're gonna have a capacitor in there because we're gonna have the terminators already connected at the segment. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna be able to disconnect our wires from our, our, uh, our, our RELCOM, power conditioners. So this one here, I'm going to go on segment three. You can look in the bottom there. It tells you which segment it's on. So before we would do that, we would always look at our, our segment uh, diagram. And so the handouts you guys will have for these. So that would be our segment. That's kind of like a loop sheet. Um, and that's what we would have for our field bus wiring. A little bit different from what you guys have, have seen with analog loops. And it would tell us what's on there, et cetera, et cetera, and how it's terminated. So I've gone ahead and I've disconnected our wires that are going out down through our, our home run or our trunk cables to our, our field bus junction boxes. And we wanna take some readings on it. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna take, um, we wanna take a, a measurement to see what we're reading regarding uh, our uh, resistance. So this one is reading 
316.8 ohms, kilo ohms. So if we go back and what we should be reading, we have a, we have a, uh, a chart to fill out, which you guys would, would get. So let's have a look at the chart. So what we're supposed to see, we're supposed to measure resistance. It should be greater than 50 kilo ohms and we're reading 360 kilo ohms and that's okay. I filled the chart out with what we're working on. Uh, checked all the cables and everything. So it looks like we're good. So that, that resistance check is good. We're greater than 50K. Why would we want to be reading greater than 50K? And why do you think it's bouncing around that it's not holding steady? Think about that for a minute. Remember that we have the terminator is on the segment. We have a capacitor, so we have that RC network. Because of that capacitor charging, you're gonna see your, your, uh, your signal bounce. Okay, so that's the first check we wanna do. The next one we wanna do is we wanna check uh, our signal to our uh, shield. So the way we have this wired up here, if you look down here, all our shields were brought in here on our field wires from our, from our segments. And then we have this overall shield tied down onto this ground bus here. So that's our isolated system ground. So the readings we should get from there should be infinite. We don't want to have our wires touching the shield. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's, uh, we'll go from here and I'll go from, there's our positive. We'll go down here and I'll check that out and see what we're reading. And it's open loop, which it should be. Okay, and now I'll go and check the other wire. And on the sheet it says, check the ground bus as well. And we're all tied together, so it's kind of a moot point. And we, again, we're open loop. So those are good readings. So now we know that we don't have any shields touching our wires and we know that we're not gonna get any, any shorts happening. So that's, that's our resistance checks. The first part of our static checks completed. The next part is we need to check the capacitance and the capacitance we, we should be reading what we have out in the field, which is a 100 ohm terminator, right? 100 ohm and one microfarad. So we have that terminator on there, plus we're gonna get capacitance in the cable as well. So I got a capacitance checker here. So let's go ahead and check that and see what we're reading. So I've got that set for our two mic. And I can connect that one there if we want. We can do that. So what are we reading here? Okay, so that looks like it is reading about 842 nanofarads, would that be, or those mics? It would be nanofarads, because I got it on the two mic. Let's have a look and see what we should be reading. Okay, we should be reading somewhere between 0.8 to 1.2 microfarads. Why would we be reading that? Because we got a, a, approximately one mic, uh, microfarad capacitor on our RC network, on our terminator. So in essence, we're reading uh, 838 or 0.84 nanofarads or 840 roughly microfarads. So that's a good reading. So we know that we have the right capacitance on our cables. So the next thing we need to do is we need to check between our shield and our signal and our conductors. I've already gone ahead and done this and my readings were all somewhere between 35 and 36 nanofarads and we should be less than that. So we shouldn't be getting that capacitance between our, our signal wire and our shields and everything looks good with that. So we're good. So once we've done those tests, we know the integrity of our cable is good and we can hook it back up, power it back up, and then we're ready to go on with the other testing. And saying that there's one other test that we can do and that is disconnecting our terminator from the field and what do you think we should read on our cable if we disconnect the terminator from the field? Okay, so we're in front of a, one of our field bus uh, junction boxes. Uh, if you have a look at FF3, uh, that is, uh, correlates with segment 
three. So this is segment three that's inside the box. And that would be coming out of the third port in the, uh, in the DCS cabinet. So if we have a look at what we have here, that's our trunk cable going back to our Delta D system. Everything else that's coming out of here are spurs that would be going to individual devices. Again, two wires only. Uh, orange is the positive, blue is the negative. Shields are all tied in. And you can see our terminator here as well. That's on our, uh, on our, on our segment protector. Notice that the power is on with the green light. And we have no other lights, fault lights on here. So if you wanted to do a quick check, you could just come up to your segment protector, have a look at it, and it would basically tell you if any of these other uh, spurs had, uh, had faulted, the light would come on. So it's, it's something you can do for diagnostics really fast. From there, we come down and we've tied this in, you can see here, uh, to our, uh, this is, a, and the reason I, I picked this particular segment protector is we, we've got a multi-variable uh, 848T uh, temperature transmitter. So this is the signal, TT2004. This would be going back to the DCS. And then we have uh, user defined. We can define whether we want to have thermocouple inputs or RTD inputs. This way, we're not having uh, individual transmitters all over the plant. We can pull all of our cables back to this multiplexer, and then we can just bring in our RTD signals and our thermocouple signals in, into the multiplexer. And then through the network, all those signals would go back to the DCS. Okay, so we've completed our static check. So we've checked resistances and capacitance on the cable. Hopefully we all had good results from that. So the next step in commissioning a segment is to check out the waveform of the communication. Now, if you have a look at the segment protector, there was one spare there. That's why I hooked up this wire there. It's, it's just random that I, I just hooked it up to that wire. I could have hooked up anywhere. I could hook up the scope here, here, anywhere on this segment. I could also go and hook the scope up on a transmitter. It's gonna be the same result. We're gonna look at the waveforms. So let's have a look at the waveform. So I got my scope here, my uh, scope, my Fluke 123. And let's hook this up, and then we'll have to set up the, the scope to read what we want. Set up the range. Okay, so our scope is hooked up. Again, we could look at that anywhere. And now we need to hook it up so we can have a look at our waveforms. So let's have a look at this here. Go to the menu. Uh, let's go. We want to look it up. It's at 10 volts per division right now. So we want to set it up, I believe, for 200 millivolts. Okay, so that's 200 millivolts per division. And then the time base we want it on this. Is 20 microseconds. It's on hold. Let's run it. And I'm not getting a signal in right now. Menu. Okay, fellas, so I've set up my scope for 20 millivolts per division, 20 microseconds per division, and you can see I'm reading peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage. So if we're looking for a, a good field bus signal, we should have some narrow and wide peaks. You can see that you can determine between, uh, oh, let's put it on hold here. You can determine the uh, zeros and ones, there's a good transition there. So that would be a really good field bus signal. And you can see right now it's uh, 849 millivolts peak to peak. We're looking for something between uh, 750 and, and uh, one uh, volt. So seven, 750 millivolts, one volt peak to peak. So it looks like we have good communication on our field bus network. Okay guys, uh, just for interest sake, so I, I've changed the scale a little bit. So we're still 200 millivolts per division and I've changed it to 50 microseconds per division. And if you want to know what our frequency is of our field bus signal, you can have a look, I changed it at the top. Instead of having to count the graticules and, and determine what it is, it's giving us the frequency. So it's 
15.6362 kilohertz is the frequency of the field bus signal. Okay, everything's functioning well. We've, we've looked at our waveform, we're happy with that. Um, so now let's see what happens if we remove a terminator. So I've, I've loosened up this connection here and I'll remove the terminator. What do you think you're gonna see? getting a very good signal here maybe I'll just change this move this up to 500 millivolts per division at 50 milliseconds we have a look at what we've got here now we've got 1.6 1.7 volts peak and you guys remember why we would be reading 1.6 1.7 volts when we remove a terminator remember that we have two terminators on a field bus network. We have one back in the DCS, and the other one is here on our segment protector. Remember that they're 100 ohm, one mic terminators. So if we have two terminators, the equivalent resistance is going to be, you guys should figure that out, 50 ohms. Now that we've removed that terminator now we only have a hundred ohms resistance therefore remember that we're, we're we've got uh, 20 uh, milliamps uh, peak to peak is our Manchester coding signal so now if we have 20 milliamps and 50 ohms now we have a higher signal so, so remember that we had equivalent of 50 ohms now we have a hundred ohms therefore we're going to be at a higher signal now because we have uh, 20 milliamps at 100 ohms uh, resistance in our in our network and that's what we see here now so uh, as a check you can check this and you would be able to tell hey i've got a terminator that's either shorted out or it's um it's maybe uh, opened up and it's not in the network anymore and that's why you're seeing the increase in the peak to peak voltage Okay, so the next thing we're gonna check is we're gonna see what happens to our waveform. And right now, looks like our waveform looks good. We're sitting at, let me put it on hold here, uh, around 100, uh, 800 millivolts. Uh, maybe change, I'll go back live here. Yeah, I'll change, there's our 20 microseconds per division. And I'll just put it on hold again. So we're about 840, 850 millivolts peak to peak which looks like a, a good waveform. So what would happen if we had one of our devices in the field, one of the spurs was to be shorted? What do you think would happen, guys? So I'm gonna put it on run again. Uh, would it affect all the other uh, uh, communications on the network or what, what do you think is gonna happen? Well, let's, let's go, I'm gonna put a jumper in, let's see what happens. Uh, I'll just randomly grab one of these transmitters here. There's the short. What happened to our signal? If you have a look at now at our scope, our signal still looks good. So it makes sense. If we had one transmitter short in the field, we would want to make sure that we can still communicate with the other devices that are on the network. And that's called spur guard. And that's built in to our segment protector. So basically what's gonna happen is they're gonna have a drain. So it's like um, uh, a current protector or a current limiter that you'd have on a DCS. Old DCS for four to 20, they were always fused before, right? And so if you, you had to be careful when you lifted a wire from a transmitter, I'm thinking about an old Fisher Pro Box, for example, you, you pop the fuse. Well, now they have current limiters on, on uh, DCS systems. So you could take the ends of the wires and dead short them and they got a current limiter, something similar to this, uh, having a segment protector. If you have a current limiter, it's not going to affect the other devices on the segment. Okay, so the next step that we want to do for our check is we want to be able to hook up our communicator, our 475 in this case, uh, to our field bus 
and have a look at what's on the network. Uh, a couple things you need to be aware of with the 475, and these are all going to be replaced with Trexus. I believe that um, uh, Emerson isn't even going to supply these anymore, so they're they're going the way of the Dodo, just like the 375, the 275, and the 268 that was before that. So where you connect here, you can have a look. This one is set up with a H there. That's for heart. We don't want heart. We want field bus. So we got to move this cover over. And there's our connections for field bus. Um, if you didn't know that, you could be struggling hooking this thing up and saying that it doesn't work. Um, and uh, now that you've seen it, I'm sure you won't forget. So then we got to hook it up that in there and then we can again hook up anywhere on the network here I just used that spare terminal just to hook up some wires to it so let's hook up our communicator just like you would with a heart communicator and we'll see what's here we need there Okay, turn on our communicator and let's have a look. And it is not, it is not fast, gentlemen and ladies, if there's any ladies. Okay, so there's the menus we, can, we have. We have heart, field bus, for example, valve link. We're not getting into that right now. So let's jump into field bus. We want to go online. And we'll look at we'll look at hooking up with a 475 and I'll, I'm also going to do uh, a hookup with a Trex. The Trex has some differences uh, from the 475 so when it when you to be able to see both. Again it's a little slow. You guys remember what our field bus uh, frequency was? What we were we were at? 15k kilohertz. So right now it's going out to the live list. It's going to see how many devices are on this segment. This one is segment three. Okay, there we go. So there's all the devices found, eight devices. So the first one you can see there is our LAS. And that's on card 18. So if we were to go back into the Delta V, you would have seen that we had our, our four field bus H1 modules. So one of them was card 18 and it's telling us it's on port one of card 18. And have a look at the address. The address is 16. Now we've gone through addresses already in our lectures, but there's one I want to point out for you. Have a look at PT2024. See that address is 20? That address would, uh, would be designated to that transmitter as a link master. So that would be the backup for the link active scheduler. So if we had a failure of the LAS, we would lose our traffic cop. We would have the link master would take over as our traffic cop. Uh, the rest of the transmitters on here, you can see they're between 29, 30, 31. What else do we have here? Uh, 32, 33. And those would be uh, the addresses that we would have for transmitters. And also, in order to be able to communicate on the network, the field communicator also needs to have an address. And you can see that it's been designated with, with uh, 53. So we'll, we'll talk a little more about addressing. Okay, so in your handouts, you have a field bus device state diagram, and if you have a look at it, uh, it tells you what addresses you should expect to see. So if we have a look over on the right-hand corner, there's our LAS, 16, it's always 16. Uh, 20, that would be for the backup, the link master. Uh, and then our, our tags for our devices would be anywhere between 20 and 35 for commissioning tags. And then uh, 
for uh, our uh, our uh, communicator you can see over here where do we have it here one of them they've given us a address of 253 which would be somewhere in here for our address for our communicator so that would be uh, between here 248 251 47 so they're giving our address for our communicator as 253. This would be what happens when we commission and decommission and we'll do that later in the lab when we actually commission and decommission and commission a transmitter onto the network. But there's where we're getting these addresses from. Link active schedulator always 16. It's back in the H1 module, back in the DCS and there's our backup there and those would be our addresses between 20 and 35 for our transmitters. Okay, so we've done a segment check. Uh, we've looked at waveforms. We've seen that uh, we've got good waveforms on that segment, but we haven't dug into any transmitters. And what we need to look at when we've got a field bus device like a pressure transmitter behind me. Uh, so we're on a different segment now. If I was to look on the communicator, I've, I've hooked up, it's gone out and uh, checked the live list to see everything that's on there. You can see the LAS on this segment is, it's still part 18, but now it's port 02 and it has a link active scheduler uh, address of 16. And we have a bunch of devices, six devices. So we've got PT2029, TT2023, PT2032, PT2031, which happens to be this transmitter right behind me here. PT2030, and there's our field communicator. This time it gave us an address of 255. The last time it was 253, so randomly it'll give us whatever address we have. If you go back to your handout, there's one thing that I handed out to you guys was a simulate parameter. Now it's a little bit different from using heart. So in heart, you would take your transmitter out of service, and then you would uh, simulate a signal uh, and it'd be out of service and then you'd have to put the transmitter back in service. So it's a little bit different with, uh, with the field bus. So with field bus, the first thing you got to know is that if you want to be able to simulate a parameter, there's a couple different ways of doing it. So if you have a look at our analog input block, that's the block that we are going to be concerned with. We're not going to look at resource blocks, resource blocks, uh, which we've gone through in the lectures, that would have information such as the model number or the serial number and that sort of thing. So we're going to look at our, our analog input block. And if you look at the input block, there's a couple different ways of simulating a signal. We can simulate here where it says simulate in that needs to be enabled. If we do that here, any scaling or any conversions or uh, uh, calculations like a square root would be done here. So for example, if I was to go and, and simulate in and I would enable the simulation if, and I put a 50% signal, let's just say it was square rooted and we had it configured for square root, that signal would come in and go through the square root and come out and by the time I read it at the out on the DCS this could be at your uh, faceplate or it could be in a graphic that would be reading 70.7 because we've gone through the square root there's another way of, of uh, us doing simulations and that is through the manual mode so right now this block this analog block is in auto that would be the normal way that this block would operate if I went and changed it to manual then I can change the mode to manual and then I'd be able to put a manual value in and if I put 50% in, you would read 50% at the DCS. You wouldn't read 70.7 because we bypassed all of this uh, square root extraction that we had in here or it could be a, a scalar or whatever. So now we would actually have 50% out. So there's two different places where you can do simulations. Trust me, it's not that easy to do with field bus. In order for us to do any simulations on field bus, there's something that you have to know. And it's, I've seen people get stuck with this because they don't know it's new technology. In the transmitter, there's actual field jumpers or switches. 
that you have to set in place to enable simulation. So let's go ahead and take the cover off and I'll show you what I mean by the, uh, uh, the switches that are in here. So I'll close this here for now. Take off our indicator. And I don't know if you can zoom in, but you can see that we have a security switch off and on. That would have to be off. And you can see here we have simulate, enable, and disable. So if you didn't know that those switches were there, you could try and simulate till the cows come home. And let's just say that you were uh, doing some commissioning, you wouldn't be able to do any simulations on it. Uh, and the only other way to get around that would be to actually hook up a pump and then pump the transmitter up and see what it was reading. Uh, I can tell you that it's a lot easier to simulate from the Delta B operator station or in control studio than it is to do it from the communicator. That doesn't mean that you're not going to use a communicator. So I'll hook this back up and then we'll see if we can do a simulation. Okay, so looked at the switches, made sure that we have our simulation enabled and our right protection is off. So we're ready to hook up and we'll go and see if we can do a simulation. Okay, so now we have our list of devices. I want to see, I wanted to log on to uh, PT2031, so it's address uh, 34, so let's go and do that. Okay, so I want to see what's configured in here. For example, uh, what the engineering units are. So I got to go down to advanced, click on there, and then I got to go down to the block list. So there's our block list. Resource block, we, we're not going to look at that. Uh, we could if we wanted to, but it's going to give us information like the serial number and the model number and that sort of thing. Uh, the transducer block, we're not going to look at that. The LCD screen, we're, we're not... Uh, interested in that right now. Advanced mass flow, no, we're not gonna use that. It's a pressure transmitter. Uh, we wanna look at the analog block. So we're gonna go to the analog block. You can see that it says auto. That means it's, it's in service and it's operating. The other blocks below them with OOS are out of service. So there's one analog block and that's what we wanna do if we wanna be able to simulate. So let's go in and have a look at it. Okay, so we come up here, here's our, our menus that we have, quick config, let's have a look at that. So AI1 is pressure, linearized type is indirect. The scale of the transmitter is uh, 250 millimeters to minus 100. And we can see that the EU scale is to my, uh, 250 to minus 100, and the, the units are in millimeters H2O. So that's the scale of the transmitter. Let's go down to advanced config. Okay, tells us what our low water cutoff is. It tells us that uh, our simulate is good. If we come up here to the next one, you can see we say uh, simulate is disabled. So we've gone ahead and we've enabled the switch on the transmitter. If the transmitter was to lose power, that enable switch on the transmitter would default back to disabled. So you'd have to click it back and forth again to enable it. We also have to enable simulate uh, here through the communicator. So let's pick that and it's disabled. And we'll go into active. Pick that and we'll say okay. And we have to send that now to the transmitter. Okay. So it's active. Okay. And now we have to go up and let's do a simulation. So right now it is reading five minus 5.34. Let's go in and let's change that to Oh, cancel that. In here. 
your simulate. Minus 5.5, for example. Say OK and send. Okay, so now we want to continue with uh, setting up our uh, simulation. So we need to go in and we need to enable it. So we also need to enable the switch, which we've done. Activate it. Okay. We need to send that. So we sent that to the device. And we can still see that we're reading whatever the value was on the transmitter. If we have a look right now, it says minus 5.4 you said that it's minus 100 to 250 is the scale so let's go ahead and simulate a value and how about 10 millimeters so let's go 10 okay and send it now we're at 10 millimeters and we can see the transmitter is reading 10 millimeters so now if you were at the dcs you would see 10 millimeters and where would you see it you would see it right through here if it was just straight through and there was no conversion or square root happening again we're simulating here and that signal is going through the analog input block to the out of the analog input block that out would be going into for example if it was just an indicator it would go into an indicator if it was going into a controller it would go into a pid block as the input on the controller so let's go and check this back out of simulation mode so I'm going to leave that 10 millimeters in there and see what happens when I go and disable it. Okay. I'm going to disable. Okay. Okay, so we're still seeing simulate at 10 millimeters. See that changes. Send it. All right, it's disabled now, still seating 10 millimeters. See if that changes. It's changed on the transmitter now. It's also changed on the communicator. So it's reading the live value now. So that's how you would do a simulation on a transmitter. Okay, so here we got a Trex. This is replacing the 475s. Uh, as far as field bus goes, this is quite a bit different from the 475. Uh, a Trex can actually work as a link active scheduler. It also can provide a signal condition power supply uh, so we can communicate uh, with devices directly without having them hooked up to the network. Uh, where the 475 is concerned, we have to have the network up and communicating in order for it to communicate. The Trex is different. We can we can go and calibrate a device on the bench. With, with the 475, we can't. One, uh, one thing I want to clarify about the Trex, you can go and configure a valve, but it doesn't have enough power to stroke the valve, unfortunately. But you can still do all the configuration on a control valve through a Trex. Uh, if you look at the connections on the back, the heart connections are marked here, milliamp, and we have our FF connections here. Uh, we're going to connect on these two terminals here. If we were going to be uh, powering with the connect with the trucks, we'd have to use this terminal here to power the uh, the, the network. It would, it would become the link active schedule. But we're going to use these terminals here. Okay, so let's power it up. Make a liar out of me. It's going to go off. Oh, it turned on. There we go. Okay, our trucks is powered up. Um, so we can go field communicator, but I, I, I want to go and show you something else that the trucks can do that, that the, the 475 can. So let's go to field bus diagnostics.
Okay, so one thing that it, that the Trex does that the field bus, uh, sorry, the 475 won't do with field bus, is if you have a look here, it gives us our DC voltage. It tells us, yeah, we got a good range. It tells us that we've got a good noise level. And it says that our signal is good as well. This is our device tags. Let me just jump back out of there. The diagnostics details there we go all right if you have a look at this again it gives us measurements here so dc voltage values looks good to me noise values hey that looks really good a bunch of zeros devices bound six and the other thing it does it gives us our peak values peak to peaks So it's a very useful tool. It's really doing a lot of the work that the scope was doing because it's giving us peak to peak values. It's giving us lots of different diagnostics here. So one other thing, if, if you want to know what units they are, you can see here that uh, these are millivolts peak to peak that they're giving us here for our units. So it's, just, it's just a matter of of scrolling over so there's our dc voltage min max and it tells you what it's in if you go up to the top here you can see that's in volts and those down here would be in millivolts peak to peak so another thing that i uh, a feature that i like about the trucks is if you have a look you can go to the overview and it actually gives you what the the ranges are it tells you what the pressure is it tells you that it's got a good signal etc etc so it's it's actually um, uh, quite a useful tool that you don't get in the 475. okay so if you need to do a simulation using a trucks the menu tree is quite a bit different from using the 475. i actually think the 475 is an easier menu tree but I, if you get used to using the tracks, it'll become second nature as well. So again, let's let's choose that transmitter. And it's thinking. And we're back to the overview. Okay, so just let that come up. So again, we're on the same transmitter that we hooked up to with the, or the same segment and the same transmitter that we have with the 475. So you need to go to service tools. Okay, and then you need to scroll down from there. And you can see it's got a completely different menu. And we go down to the block list. So we're not interested in the resource block, the transducer, the LCD, all these diagnostics. We want to go to the analog input. So that's the block we want to look at. And then we want to go to advanced configuration. And now you can see we're pretty much at the same menu that we had with the, with the 475 and we would have to go in and we would have to activate uh, the simulate and then we'd have to put a simulate value in the same way we did so we'd have to go I guess we could do that activate okay uh, send it Don't forget to send send so it's activated again we've got our jumpers in the right place and let's do a simulate value uh, we'll do 10 again 10 millimeters And we need to send that again. And now if you're on the DCS, you would see 10 millimeters. And you can also see the transmitters changed. Again, we'll go back and we'll disable that. So there's a couple of ways we could disable it. We can do it here uh, through the communicator, or we could go and change the switch and it would do the same thing. I think it's easier right now for us to do it here. So let's just go there again. And we'll disable that. Okay, we need to send. Send it. Okay, it's disabled. Now we'll just wait. Uh, transmitter change is back to the actual value. 
and you can see that our simulate value is reading the same as our actual value. So that's how you would do it with the Trex as opposed to uh, using a 475. Uh, get used to the Trex, you're going to see more and more of these coming in the field. Okay, so I want to show you another way or another method of doing a simulation or doing a loop test. So what you need to do is, I'll, I'll just back out one level. You need to go to your block list or you can back out even one more. There's advanced. Let's back out one more. Okay, so there's our transmitter, 2407. gathering all the data on that transmitter. Ooh, advanced. Now the block list. And we'll go down to our AI block, which is an auto. Okay, so now we're into our AI block and I want to change the mode. So I'll tap on the mode. See right now it's in auto. If we went back to our uh, schematic that we had, we can simulate by putting our uh, target mode into manual. So let's do that. Get rid of that. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the target mode now is manual. Okay. So now I'm in my quick config. So let's back out one level. You should see our target mode change to manual actual mode there you go so you can see now we're in manual let's open it up let's do a uh, quick config okay there's our scaling for our transducer you can see it's 0 to 200 and in this case we've got it scaled from 41.8 to 241.8. The reason we're doing that is because we're getting rid of the head, so it'll actually read 0 to 200 kPa. Right there. Common config. Scroll. There's our limits. There's our targets for our modes. There's the modes that are permitted. In this case, this transmitter here has auto, manual, and out of service. The other transmitters we were looking at, they only had auto and out of service permitted. Therefore, we never used the manual mode. And there's our engineering scales. There. The connections. You can see that our output value right now is zero. Let's change that. Because we're in manual, we're able to change this. So let's say 10. Okay. Send it. Okay. 10 kPa. So now let's go inside and have a look at the DCS and we'll see what the value is. Okay. So what we did in the field was we uh, enabled uh, the manual mode uh, on our AI block. Therefore, we we're, we're, we're putting a manual uh, reading in at 10 kPa. So if we were to look at this analog block, you can see that it's reading 10. But if I go where it says simulate and it's disabled, it's actually reading the real value. Now depending on where you take that value from, you can get a discrepancy uh, between a faceplate or say a graphic. So the graphic might be reading 10, the faceplate might be reading this value, the actual value, the real value. So you need to be aware of that when you're doing some commissioning. Once you're up and running and everything's in auto, it, it's not an issue. But if you're doing simulations in order to, for example, test alarm points, um, you have to be aware that this is, the, this is the, the output that you would use for your alarm point if you're going to do simulations. You actually wouldn't use the real value that's coming in here as a simulated value, even though it's disabled. That's the real value. So it's something, it's an awareness thing when you're doing commissioning. Depending on where you're picking off 
that data. It can be at the front end of the AI block where I've shown you where you can do your simulation, or it can be on the out of the AI block. So you need to be aware of that. Okay, so we're in manual mode, and we proved on the DCS that we could see 10 kPa. We talked about that you have to look at scaling and you have to de determine where you're picking up that information when you're doing testing. So let's get out of here and go back to auto and we'll see what happens. So let's go here. We're gonna make our target is gonna be auto. Say okay. Yeah. Yeah, so now we're gonna go. Yeah. There we are. Now we're back in auto. We're actually reading what the transmitter is sending out. Now, if we look at the transmitter, got 41.52 kPa and what we're doing with that is we're scaling it so we're actually doing a, a zero shift on that to read 0 to 200 where it's actually reading uh, uh, 41.52 to 241.52 but all we're doing is we're taking out the head so we're suppressing the head on the transmitter so there's a couple of different ways that you guys can do some simulations I get it, field bus ain't that easy, is it? It's not intuitive like heart. Um, it's much easier to simulate using heart. Um, and uh, if you get an opportunity, and I will show you when, we're, when we do the lab, uh, or when we're doing the lab, uh, how you can manipulate those values using your Delta V operates uh, uh, station. And it's actually a lot easier there than it is here. So sometimes, depending on what you want to do, you might do all your testing, you can do testing by doing simulations from the operator station. But in my opinion, it's best to come right out to the transmitter, make sure all the wiring is done correctly, make sure all the connections are, are, are properly made up. And you might have to take measurements to determine how many, how many inches and then determine what it is in KPA if you're going to do any suppressions and elevations on your transmitters as well. So there's, there's positives and negatives. Again, if we were to go and change that switch back, then uh, we wouldn't be able to do simulations. And if we cycled power, it would default back to the uh, disabled uh, uh, parameter. And we'd have to go and reset it again to, in order for us to do any, uh, any simulations. So that's it for field bus. Hope you guys enjoyed it and now what we'll do next is now we've done a lot of stuff out in the field what we'll do next is we'll see how we commission and decommission devices onto a onto a field bus network using our delta v uh, operator stations